just a quick five-ish minute video on Ward versus Wilbanks. Uh, so this case is a pretty interesting one. Basically, back in 2009, you had a practicum student uh, named Julia Ward, and she is a devout Christian, and she was attending Eastern Michigan University, EMU. And she was in her practicum, and she is assigned a client, and after reading their file about two hours before the session, she asked if she should refer the client to another counselor counselor, she asked the, um, Dr. Calloway, the person whose license she was practicing under, if she should refer this client to another counselor because she would be unable to affirm the client's homosexual behavior. This student had sought counseling uh, regarding depression, that was what they were coming in for, but they'd previously had counseling about uh, his homosexual relationship, and so Ward was concerned that she would not be able to affirm that. And Dr. Calloway decided to cancel the appointment and then uh, basically reported her to EMU basically saying, hey, you're you're not going to have any more clients assigned to you, and we, we've got to do a little review. So they did an informal review, and they found that um, she had violated ACA policies as well as university policies. Um, they were citing about imposing views that are inconsistent with counseling goals and discrimination based on sexual orientation. Basically, just a, a failure to bracket your values and deciding to not work with a client. And then um, they gave her the... Uh, uh, some options. At the end of that informal review, they said, hey, we can do, you know, a serious review that's probably not going to go very well. You can enter a remediation or you can, you know, quit the program. She said, all right, let's 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 do it. Do the review. And they unanimously found that she should be removed from the program. In a 2012 interview, Julia Ward sought out Christian perspective, although it, it seemed based on the questioning that at least the, some of the instructors were Christian. But she sought out the Christian perspective, according to her interview, and the ADF the um, Alliance Defense Fund, who's, um, I think, somewhat recently been rebranded as the Alliance Defending Freedom, at least according to the YouTube channel, they uh, filed lawsuit on her behalf. The district court, they went for summary judgment, and they found on behalf of the defendant, which was EMU. Uh, they agreed with Ward that the staff were uh, hostile, arrogant, offensive, but legally, they were in the right. Uh, they said that Ward had distorted the fact to support her claim that her dismissal was based on religious beliefs and because she refused to counsel homosexual clients uh, if they wanted to discuss romantic or sexual relationships. Uh, she was never asked to change or modify her beliefs, also because they gave her the option for remediation and she refused that, making it clear that she was not going to counsel uh, clients. And they also threw in a bit that uh, this decision was made based on the ACA Code of Ethics and um, the school needing to keep their KCREP accreditation up to standards. So that was appealed and that went to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. And there the opinion was written saying that the free speech claim should be heard by a jury because a reasonable jury uh, may find that she did not actually violate the ACA Code of Ethics. According to the judge's opinion, the ACA Code of Ethics had portions in there for value-based referrals. It, it seemed like maybe the story had changed a little bit or we just weren't given all the details in the first round uh, because it also according to the circuit court, she only asked to refer a client if the conversation required her to uh, discuss sexual practices, and she also held that same conviction with heterosexual clients who were outside of wedlock or committing adultery. Uh, they also claimed that the referral did not have a negative impact on the client, and she and the client actually probably got better uh, counseling than they would have from Ward. Uh, so they, they also found that the free exercise claim should be heard. A university, the I guess one of the claims that they used to expel Ward was that there was a blanket rule that students could not refer clients during their practicum. And that was nowhere in writing and nor was it communicated verbally to Ward or other students who were part of the proceedings and saying that the only written rules were the ACA code of ethics. And like I said, uh, the court found that the value-based referrals were acceptable according to the code. Uh, according to Kaplan 2014, uh, diversity is a core value of 
of the ACA Code of Ethics and for counseling, even in the 2005 version. And there's a major difference between when you refer a client in the 2005 version, it was, the language was you had an inability to work with them rather than just being unwilling. So uh, Kaplan's claim was that Ward was unwilling to work with the client, and so she was violating the ethics code. According to Stafford 2012 uh, news article covering the final decision, this circuit court referred it back and said, hey, this should go to trial. And rather than continue to trial, EMU settled for $75,000, which sounds like a lot of money, and, and it is. And they claimed the trial would have been too costly. The ADF took that as a win. However, uh, being a part of a school district, Mount Vernon City Schools, we had a similar First Amendment issue with a teacher who was removed for teaching, a science teacher for teaching creationism, a freshwater case. And we spent over a million dollars on that court case uh, among all the different appeals, uh, let alone what we had to pay for uh, substitute teachers and PTO for teachers to go and testify in these various different courts. So $75,000 seems much lower than that, which uh, Mount Vernon City Schools ended up winning that decision, but costs a lot more money. EMU also claimed that because of the settlement, they would be able to keep their policies and curriculum intact. According to Hayes and Erford, 2018, our text for the class, this decision and a few others uh, basically led the ACA to sort of change the language and release a new version of the standards. Basically seemed like they were thinking, hey, if people are going to make interpretations about the words we wrote, saying things that we don't agree with, then we better, we better punch up the language. And the uh, language around affirming diversity and seeking social justice is now a big part of the 2014 ACA standards. As far as what I believe here, this whole story reminds me of um, in John chapter 8, 1 through 11, about the adulterer, the woman who is to be stoned. And uh, Jesus said, hey, let the guy who's sinless go ahead and throw that first stone. And nobody did. And that, that's sort of what this one reminds me of that. And uh, it's, there's a lot of verses in the Bible. Matthew had a, a good one about uh, judgment and how basically it seems really incongruent to say I can't work with this client because of their sinful lifestyle when, uh, according to Christianity, everyone is living a sinful lifestyle because no one's perfect and grace and forgiveness is supposed to be uh, the norm. And it seems to me like uh, no matter how someone is living or what they've done, everyone deserves to feel better and everyone deserves to have help. As far as my personal beliefs, uh, I, I'm no longer a Christian. I follow a suit tradition and we have kind of an interesting parable about that. Um, basically, so imagine we're all sitting around a campfire and, you know, we're, it's, a, it's a perfect circle somehow magically, just, just roll with it. So we're all sitting around the campfire and I'm sitting across from you and the fire's in the middle of us and I say, hey, you come, come over here. This is the best path to the fire, when clearly the best path to the fire is from where you're sitting directly to the fire. And that's where my beliefs go, that uh, the way I live my life uh, might be different from the way that other people live their lives, and that doesn't make them worse. It just makes their path different from mine. Anyway, I'm sure that was way longer than five minutes, and I can't wait to cut a bunch of that out. So thanks for watching.